Leakage is any current that flows in a MOSFET other than the current that flows between the source and the drain when the transistor is on. So I want to start discussing leakage in MOSFETs. And leakage just simply means any current that flows in the MOSFET other than the drift current that flows between the drain and the source when the transistor is on. So it actually could be current that is flowing when the transistor is cut off, or it could be current that is flowing when the transistor is on, other than the current we are used to. Normally, we are more concerned about leakage current when the transistor is off, uh, because, first of all, it is a form of power dissipation, it represents a form of power dissipation, but more importantly, leakage current represents a failure of the transistor to shut down. As we will see, this will ultimately be the uh, limit of scaling of MOSFET transistors. So if we look at an NMOS transistor, just a very conceptual view of the NMOS transistor, there are many ways in which current other than the drift current between the drain and the source can flow. But there are three main mechanisms that I'm, uh, I'm going to discuss in a lot of detail. Two of which are really important, and the third is kind of... Uh, not really that uh, that big of a deal. So we're talking about uh, the case where there is no channel in uh, the transistor. So basically, uh, there are reverse biased PN junctions between the drain and the source, and between the drain and the body, and the source and the body. And uh, so, excuse me, this is the gate, and this is the body, and let's assume for a moment that it is uh, grounded. So. The first kind of uh, current we have never taken into consideration is the reverse saturation current that flows uh, in the reverse biased PN junctions of the source to body and the drain to body. This is actually a very easy uh, form of, of, uh, of, of leakage to understand because we know the equation for the reverse saturation current. It's, uh, we know how to control it. And um, if you look at the expression of reverse saturation current, and let's take uh, drain to body uh, current, for example, it's gonna be Q times A times Ni square into uh, DP divided by LP uh, N, uh, N uh, D, which is uh, uh, do the doping, donor doping level, plus DN over LN and P, which is the whole uh, the acceptor doping level. So uh, let's just uh, uh, spe specify what we mean by uh, each of these terms. So the area here is the area of the PN junction. It's going to be the area of the drain. So if you, if you think of the drain as kind of a shallow N plus type um, uh, depression in the body, then it would be the area of the bottom of the, uh, of the drain. If the drain has some depth, then we also have to take into consideration the side areas of the drain. But it's the total uh, PN junction interface area uh, through which this reverse saturation current flows. Um, D and D is the doping level on the end side of the PN junction, which in this case is the drain. And NP or NA is the uh, acceptor doping on the P type uh, side of the PN junction. And in this case, it's actually the substrate. So uh, we should be using N substrate. So uh, if you look at this form of leakage, how can we uh, reduce it? We can reduce it by using high doping in the drain and high doping in the substrate. This helps uh, increase the denominator of the terms within the braces. We can also uh, reduce the area of the drain uh, to reduce uh, this part of the, of the expression. But there's a price to pay for some of these decisions. So increasing doping in the drain is, is actually a good thing because it reduces uh, drain resistance. But increasing doping in the substrate has a price because uh, if you increase doping in the substrate, uh, then you, you decrease the mobility of charges within the channel because you have more irregularities in the crystal and thus um, the uh, electrons will um, bump a lot more often into uh, these imperfections and the drift velocity will decrease for the same uh, electric field, which means basically that mobility has decreased. And so using a heavy substrate doping is not something uh, that comes without a price. Also reducing the area of the drain is not something that comes without a price because drain area is gonna affect uh, drain resistance. 
Uh, drain resistance is not something that we have thought about a lot, but it is something that we should think about now because uh, it is a parasitic resistance that exists that we never had to model. So when we modeled the transistor, we assumed that the source and the drain were actually kind of almost short circuits, but there is a small uh, resistance here, which is the drain resistance and a small source resistance. So ideally, we would like to keep this resistance very small, which means uh, that not only do we have to keep the area of the bottom of, of, of the drain and the source large, but we also have um, to make them relatively deep. So this depth would also increase the effective area, uh, increase the effective area of the drain and thus reduce its resistance. Overall, though, this reverse saturation current is not a current that we are really concerned about. Uh, mainly because it doesn't scale too badly and also because it flows into the body and so it, it really doesn't represent any loss of, of transistor action that we should be concerned about. Uh, there are two other leakage currents that I will be discussing in a lot more detail and these two currents are the currents that should concern us. Uh, the first is a gate tunneling current and this is a current that flows from the gate to the body uh, and so it is um, an electron flow uh, that moves through the oxide, which should be an insulator. And as we will see, uh, this is a, a flow that happens despite the existence of a large uh, energy barrier. So uh, it happens due to quantum effects that uh, are a little bit hard to understand. The other sort of leakage that we have to talk about in depth is subthreshold conduction. And subthreshold conduction is conduction that happens between the source and the drain. And I'm showing the direction of electron flow rather than current flow. But it is conduction between the source and the drain that happens below the threshold voltage. And it, it really has to do with the fact that even below the threshold voltage, there are electrons in the channel, uh, which shows the value of threshold voltage to represent um, the a value at which the channel starts to appear, but in reality, that's not the definition of threshold voltage. The definition of threshold voltage is the voltage at which the channel is as n-type as the body is p-type, which means that even below the threshold voltage, there are electrons in the channel. There may even be a lot of electrons in the channel, which means that there will be current flowing through the channel uh, even below the threshold voltage. In fact, what we will find is uh, that the interaction between gate tunneling current and subthreshold conduction current is uh, the main thing that is, um, that is really screwing us over. So uh, to reduce one, you'll find that you have to greatly increase the other. And that's the problem. What helps decrease uh, tunneling current will increase subthreshold conduction. And that is a big problem, which we'll spend a lot of time trying to solve. So just to reiterate what I mean by leakage current, leakage current is any current other than the IDS that we derived either using uh, velocity saturation or pinch off saturation. So um, we normally talk about leakage current when we have uh, a cutoff transistor. So we are mostly concerned with this situation. We have an NMOS with zero volt at the gate and let's assume that we have a drain potential of VDD. We should see zero current flowing through this transistor. We don't. We see a large, not a large, we see a current flowing from the drain to the source. And we also see a current flowing from the gate to the source. Uh, this is mainly the subthreshold conduction current, which we will discuss in detail. And this is mainly the gate tunneling current, which we'll also discuss in detail. These leakage currents offer us a couple of problems. First of all, they affect power dissipation by adding a new mechanism of power dissipation. But most importantly, they represent a failure of the transistor to cut off. We have to be able to cut off. A transistor has to, be, has to act as a switch. It has to be able to provide a perfect short circuit when it's on, which it fails to do, which is why we have delay. It also should, should present a perfect open circuit when it is cut off, which we will see it miserably fails to do as well. 